This is One on One. Panera is good. You see him in Fan of the Opera. You see him right here in Lincoln Center. He's the actor playing in uh, Fan of the Opera on Broadway, playing at the Majestic Theater at 247 West 44th Street. How are you doing? I'm great. What do you mean you just saw that for the first time? I, I've never seen a lot of that video footage. That was from the 25th anniversary when we celebrated that uh, huge landmark. How great. I know, right? Now, you've played in this. You played the role of Phantom how many times? Oh my gosh, I know it's over 2,000. I don't have the exact number, but uh, it's, I call them the, the, the internet people have told me <laughs> that it, it's, it's over. But it's your third iteration of it, right? Yeah, third time in the role. Uh, first time was in 99, but I was uh, just a quickie. And then I, I left to do a show called Martin Gare, which didn't ever come to Broadway. Right. Came back a few years later, uh, played it for about two years, and then left to do Elton John's new show, Lestat, which also didn't really make it, and here I yeah. am six years later, uh, back in the mask again, and... Uh, what do you love about it? Oh my God, it's a dream role. You know, certain roles come along and they fit you different ways, just like trying on a pair of pants, and I, I would go as far as to say that this role fits me perfectly. It's like trying on a suit that needs no alterations whatsoever. Um, vocally, it's right in my sweet spot, you know, the low, the high. And uh, I think especially this third time back, um, I'm older, I'm wiser, I've lived mm -hmm. more life, and I think I'm, I'm really able to fill the, fill the shoes, fill the mask. Before, speaking of the mask, in just a few moments, we'll see some of the, uh, the work that goes on in makeup, which I hear oh, is cool. kind of challenging. Yeah, um, an hour of prosthetics. Yeah. For those who don't know you, the, the story behind Phantom of the Opera, set it up because it's a powerful, powerful message. It is message. powerful. It's, uh, I think it's pretty profound. Unlike a lot of the movies mm -hmm. uh, where uh, his name is Eric, by the way, with a K, Eric with a K. That works. Uh, he, uh, in, in many of the movie versions, he's either been burnt in a fire or uh, had acid thrown in his face. In this Hal Prince version, he is born deformed. And the first thing that his mother does when he's born is put a mask on her child because she's so repulsed by him. And thus begins the, the damage mm. uh, at, at childhood. And he's, he's a genius, he's a, he's a prodigy. He's mm. a musical genius and he grows up to be this slightly deranged composer. He wasn't born that way. No. Society made him. There's a society made him society deranged. Made him. There's a beautiful uh, poem in the Spoon River anthologies that talks about a little boy who steals an apple, and they, because he was starving, and they call him a thief. And it, they talk about it's not the act of stealing the apple that makes him a thief. It's the way people respond to that little child, and it's the same thing for the Phantom. You know, he wasn't born bad. He just, he's been damaged by society and shunned. He's an outcast. What's he looking for? Looking for love and acceptance, unconditional love, I think, you know. To, to, to be rejected by your mother, I think that's the most innate gift that mm. I think all of us want. And, and so uh, he's there in the Paris Opera, sorry for interrupting me, he's in the Paris Opera set in what years? What period of time? Uh, in the 1800s, I believe. I yeah. should know this, shouldn't yeah. I? Yeah, I think it's, is it, Paul, late 1800s, I think it is. Um, 1880s. So as you play this role, and you play it multiple times, the, the you know, 2,000 plus, but the third time you come back to play it. It's not the same role for you, is it? And it's not the same audience. It, it can't I, be. It, what does that mean? Um, every single night, it's, that's the beauty of theater. Um, you bring everything from your day to the stage. If you've had, uh, not, not to bring the room down, but I remember having to come back right after my father passed away. And there was a different depth 
depth to my performance that first night back that wasn't there two weeks prior. Mm. Um, every night there's a scene where Christine hands uh, the Phantom's ring back, basically saying, I can't love you the way that you want me to love you. And in those three seconds, my entire uh, engagement, marriage, divorce, plays through my mind. Everything you do in your life... Your real life. In your real life, if you're, in my opinion, if you're being a truthful actor, you try to bring as much of yourself to every role so that the audience gets a peek at your soul. So, so hold on. Be, again, I, we'll go to the mask in a second. That's what our producers want us to do, but I, I okay. want to set it up a little bit more. When, when people talk about acting as the process by which you disassociate or, or remove yourself from who you are to be this other per character, uh -huh. you just sounded like you were doing something very different. I think it's integration. I think you need, now granted, I've never, I'm not a mass murderer or I ran, I killed anybody, but if you're playing someone like that, and the Phantom, he does, he, he kills people. But if you approach the role as, oh, I'm playing a murderer, you're not serving the character. I'm trying to find as much of Eric and Hugh that can, can, can do this and, and come together so that you as an audience member see a human being and you don't see a cardboard cutout. Mm. Um, for me, that's, that's the challenge of acting, is taking any role and finding as much humanity and as much of, of your heart and your soul mm. and still remaining truthful to the character that you know, Gaston LaRue created um, or in our production, How Prince Directed. Well, let's take a look at uh, some of the stuff you go through. Let's, uh, folks, if we could, Bob and the team, production team, describe what we're seeing. Okay, this is the, I have already been uh, glued into my bald cap. Uh, both of my eyebrows have been waxed out. You can see the Phantom's eyebrow, which actually has to match the mask on the other side of my face has been penciled in. And uh, because the Phantom lives underground, he is very, very pale. Um, he never sees the sunlight. On the other side of my face, I have three prosthetics, a skull piece, a cheek piece, and it's not colored in yet, but a little tiny lip. All right. And all of this is glued onto your face. Uh, with spirit gum, prosade adhesive, and medical adhesive, which is the same kind of glue they use uh, on cancer patients. You can see two little microphones over my eyebrow. They are also glued onto my face. On the right side of your head, mm -hmm. microphone? They no bigger than an eraser on a pencil. Little microphone? Yeah, two of them. One is a backup. God forbid anything should happen. All right. That's my friend Perlita Price, the makeup artist in the back. Hi, Perlita. And, um, she's great, isn't she? She's amazing. Yeah. And that is a, a lace front wig that gets glued down as well. Uh, I should take stock in the glue company because we go through a lot of spirit gum every night. And um, there's the final, the final shot of the mask, which is fiberglass and lined in leather. And most people think it's just white. It is actually five different colors. Uh, and there's actually, you can't see in that shot, but pink in the cheek. It is hand painted and touched up every single show. No. Touched up every single show. For every single show. Uh, my dresser, Andrew Nelson, is impeccable. Keeps me, uh, you know, my job is to go out and sing and act. I always say, God bless, you know, my team that gets me ready because um, they make sure my tie is straight, my cufflinks are perfect, um, the makeup is perfect, and then I can go out and do my job. You, Panera, is in Phantom of the, Phantom of the Opera at the Majestic at uh, 247 West 40. Fourth Street. We encourage everyone to go uh, out there. And uh, Hal Prince is still. He's uh, the man. Yeah, well, he is again, the man. a legend. And um, 26th year on Broadway, fan of the opera. And you, we appreciate you being here and wish you nothing but the best, you and your colleagues, in Thank this extraordinary you so much. performance. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there. Stay with us from the Tisch WNET studios right here in the heart of Manhattan Lincoln Center. We'll be right, that, right back after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health, St. Peter's University, United Water, Qualcare Inc. New Jersey's credit unions, Johnson & Johnson, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC.
Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.